Welcome to VRD Nation. As you guys know that we are on a mission to teach each and every aspect of trading view, starting from the very basic and then going all the way to the advanced concepts. So we are making a series of videos where we will cover each and every aspect of trading view. So we started this series with the basics of trading view, right? So we made one video about half an hour long where we explained the basics of trading view, how to get started. So if you have not watched that video, I will strongly recommend you to watch that. And this particular video is going to be dedicated for charting functionalities in trading view, right? So both the charting functionalities as well as the basics of trading view, they are relatively simple, easy to understand, but they are very foundational, right? So don't skip these things and start going to the advanced concept, because if you don't understand these, you most likely will have trouble grasping the advanced concept. So uh, after charting is done, the next video is going to be on alerting and in alerting, we'll have a lot of fun. And then after alerting, we'll get down to some serious stuff like back testing and then strategy creation. Right? So we have some very ambitious plans for trading view and we want all the encouragement that we can get, right? So whatever you guys can do to appreciate the effort that we are putting in. So you're liking the videos, giving us feedback, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. So do everything that you can to just give us encouragement that we are on the right track. So now let's get down to the details. So we talked about the basic features of trading view in the last video and this particular video, we wanted to do this on trading view, but a lot of you reminded us that trading view has now been integrated with a lot of brokers. So it will make much more sense if we discuss charting in the context of a broker and one such broker is Zerodha. So we thought, why not we use Zerodha as a broker's platform and showcase all the charting functionalities that are available on trading view through Zerodha kite. So all the charting functionality that you're going to see in this video, they're going to be equally applicable, whether you want to do this on Zerodha or you want to do this on trading view, because at the end of the day, it is trading views functionality, right? So without further ado, let's get started. So when you come to the home screen of Zerodha, this is what you see. And what a lot of people don't realize is that the charts that you see here, these charts are not actually provided by Zerodha. Since the beginning of Zerodha itself, back in 2010, Zerodha partnered with a company called Chart IQ. So whatever charts that you're seeing right now, they are developed and supported by Chart IQ. And Chart IQ was the only provider of the chart for Zerodha for a very long time. And I myself have been using for quite some time. So I got used to what uh, this chart looks like. But back in 2020, Zerodha introduced a new partner for charting platform that is TradingView. So now as a Zerodha user, I have two choices. Either I can stick with Chart IQ platform, which is what we are seeing right now, or we can switch to the TradingView platform. So the way you will make that selection is basically you will go to your profile, click on my profile. You will see that either you can select chart IQ or you can go with trading view. So in this particular case, of course, we will go with trading view. Now you can see that the look and feel of this chart has completely changed and this looks more like trading view. Now trading view charts are definitely much more sophisticated than the chart IQ charts. But there is one thing which I kind of miss uh, in trading view because in chart IQ, I was able to hold on and drag and move the chart up and down. But in trading view, I basically have to do this minimize and maximize. I cannot drag and move the chart up and down. I don't know, maybe it's because one of my bad habits that I picked up uh, while uh, you know working with the chart IQ charts, but uh, that's one thing which I kind of miss. Hopefully they will add that functionality at some point. All right. So what we'll do right now is we will pop out this chart into a new window so that we can explore all the functionality. So I'm going to click on this button right here, pop out chart. And here, as you can see that we are having the same look and feel as we saw on tradingview.com. Now, the way to use this chart is to think about two scenarios. Scenario number one, you are in a trade or you're planning to take a trade. And scenario number two, you are just analyzing the charts purely, let's say at the end of the day or just for analysis. So for the scenario number one, where you are in a trade or you're planning to take a trade, what you should do is that there is a little uh, icon here on the top uh, left hand side, you just click on that and it opens up the window of it gives you the market depth and it gives you the open position. So I'm, what I can do is I can collapse this market depth because I don't use it. And if I place any new orders, for example, I can see them here. So the thing I really like about this particular layout is that I can be in a trade and I can analyze the chart at the same time without having to switch from one screen to the other. And what we can also do is, for example, let's say here I can change the script. So let's say I'm going to take, let's say, yes, bank. So for Yes Bank, and let's say I can change the time frame. I can make it, let's say, daily chart. So for example, let's say I want to uh, short Yes Bank for some reason. Right? So I can place an order for Yes Bank. And uh, I can say okay, I want to short Yes Bank on an intraday basis and uh, sell. And you can see here that in the open order section, I can see that the order is pending for execution. So I can basically go here and I can modify it. And I can even make it to, let's say, 
15 bucks so that it gets executed. So the order got executed and, and what I can also do is I can place an exit order for this particular position, right? So for example, I can say that I want to get out of this uh, if the stock goes back to let's say 14.95, something like that. So if I place this order, the open order will show up here. Now, you have to realize is that this particular window is not specific to trading view. This is something which was already there and it also worked with chart IQ. But this is the nice view, so I thought it is just uh, let me talk about it. Now there is one limitation here is that you can see the position, you can see the open orders, but you cannot see the executed orders, right? So if you want to see the history of the executed orders, you basically will have to go here and you have to see all the orders that you have placed. So for that, you basically will have to go back to the main screen. So the main screen is much better if you want to see your positions, if you want to see, you know, your orders and stuff like that. But if you want to analyze the charts at the same time, keep an eye on the position at the same time, keep an eye on the open orders. Then in that case, I think this view looks good. So having said that, the intention of this particular video is of course not to uh, do trading. It's basically to focus on the chart. So what I will do is I will close this uh, section by clicking on this X icon here. And uh, as you can see here now that we have the full chart to ourselves. Now, the first thing that I want to highlight here is that right at the bottom, you will see that this little blue uh, button with a little arrow on it. So what this does basically is that it enables this uh, charting tools toolbar. So if you don't want to use this, you can just click on this uh, hide drawing toolbar button and it will hide it. And if you want to enable it again, you can just click on it again and it will bring it up. So that's how you can hide and you can show the drawing toolbar. So when I'm analyzing Nifty or any particular index, I don't really pay a lot of attention to the volume. So what I can see here is that they have all this volume bar showing up how much volume was traded, but I don't want to see them. So what I can do is uh, here, right here, I can basically hide the volume. So this is this uh, show and hide button. I will just click on this and the volume is gone. So now things are much clearer. I can just focus on the price rather than worrying about the volume. And of course, as we have discussed earlier that we can do all sorts of things here. We can add the indicators. So moving average, for example, if I want to add it, I can add it here. And after adding, of course, I can click on the gear icon. I can change the period. I can change the style. I can, uh, you know, basically I can make it a different color. So I'm going to keep it to, uh, to blue thickness. I can increase the thickness here. So, and so on and so forth. So basically we can just play around with the indicators and templates as we discussed in the last video so that uh, you can get the right kind of a view that you need. Now here, I want you to pay attention to a little bit to this lower area right here. So here you can see this is a time zone. So time zone will be automatically selected to the Indian time zone. But for some reason, let's say you messed up or you, uh, you know, you clicked on something, but you let's say picked up New York. So then the time will not make a lot of sense, right? So you have to make sure that for some reason, let's say the, uh, this time zone has got messed up. It has to be in the Indian time zone. So basically you have to scroll down all the way and you will see Kolkata. So UTC plus 530, that is Kolkata. And that is, uh, that is what our trading hours are. So please make sure that you are adjusting the time zone in case it is not correct. The next very interesting feature which I find here is that you can instead of looking at a chart in terms of the actual price, you can see them in percentage. So when I click on this, I can see the moment of Nifty in terms of percentage. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that this percentage change that you see here, the percentage change is not with respect to the previous close because right now what I'm seeing here is 0.76% up on Nifty. Whereas if you see Nifty is currently down, right? So the percentage that we are seeing here, that is 0.7.8%, it is with respect to the beginning of this chart. So if I drag this a little bit here, you can see that the percentage change has changed, right? So, so it takes this as the starting point and with respect to this, it is telling us whether Nifty has gone up or has gone down. So when you are analyzing in percentage terms, you have to make sure you have to understand that it is not with respect to the previous day close, it is with respect to the first bar on this chart. So now, for example, if I want to go back to my old settings, so I will just click on this again, it will be like a toggle setting and I can go back and see the same prices that I had earlier. So you will notice that when you click something, when, when something is enabled, it will turn into blue. When you click on it again, like a toggle, it becomes black. So black means it's not enabled and blue means it is enabled. So auto, for example, is enabled because it's blue log and percentage case. They are not enabled and that's why they are black. So talking about the log scale, so log scale is something very important and I really prefer using log scales on the daily charts. I don't use that much on an intraday chart because intraday trading is more about points for me. I don't want to see the percentage terms, but if I'm analyzing a daily chart, especially for stocks and daily charts, weekly charts, monthly charts, I definitely want to analyze my charts on the logarithmic scale. So if you are new to log charts, the basic idea behind the log charts is that the distance between price A and price B is not uniform in the case of a log chart. 
what is uniform between point A and point B all the time is the percentage difference between the prices, right? So we will probably, you know, take this up in a separate video. But as of now, just understand that logarithmic scale, that they are not equidistant in terms of prices. Now, right at the end here, you can see there is a gear icon, which is basically nothing but the setting. So here you have different choices. You can reset the scale. So let's say, for example, you want to go back to where you were earlier. Uh, you can do the left axis. So if I click on this, so you can see that on the left axis also, I can see the prices. So I can have both right axis and the left axis. And you can just play around with this log scale. We have already selected. That's why it's showing as uh, checked. Now I will give you one piece of advice here that do not play a lot with the scale. So once you pick a certain scale, just stick with it, right? So if there is a setting that you are comfortable with, with the auto scale uh, or the scale uh, for scale price chart only. So whatever is the case that you are picking, I do not like to mess around with the scale because they create confusion and inconsistency in the analysis. So I don't, I don't touch these things at all. Apart from that, what you can do is you can basically click on this uh, scales properties, which will give you a better screen to work with. So the same thing that we saw by clicking on the gear icon, I can see this in a uh, better layout. So here, what you can do is you can, let's say if you click on symbol labels, you can see that nifty 21st March future shows up, right? So if I click on uncheck, that is gone. If I click it, it's back again. Indicator label. So indicator label in this case is the label of the indicator. So when I click on this, you can see that the moving average shows up here, right? So it's showing me that the, this blue line belongs to moving average. And if I also click on the indicator last value, I can also see that the moving average value is 14,966.65. So guys, you can play around with the scales, but my advice is that do not do too much of engineering on this particular screen because it only creates confusion. The only thing that I will advise you is to use logarithmic scale when you are analyzing charts on a longer time frame. But apart from that, I think you can just stick with one setting and you can always stay with that. So what I will do is because I have done so many different changes, I want to go back to where I was earlier. So I will click on this button defaults and by clicking on default, I'm basically back to where I was earlier. So that takes care of all those changes that I made earlier and I will be back to normal. So we talked about this area, but let me talk about the cool functionality, which was not available to us in trading view. So when we click on the screen layout, remember uh, that in the free version of trading view, it doesn't allow us to have more than one chart per tab. But within Zerodha, if you are using trading view, then you can use multiple charts within the same window. So in this particular case, for example, if I do this, I can see that there are two charts. So uh, these two charts are, are tiled vertically. I can make them horizontal. I can do, uh, you know, three charts if I want to like this, something like this. So you can do basically all sorts of combinations here. So let's just go back to this layout and understand a few other things. So the number one thing that we have to understand here is that uh, there is an option of synchronizing on all the charts. And this is very important to understand because this each of this is a separate chart in trading view. And uh, let me just uncheck all of these and let will go one by one. So when I say synchronize on all the charts, it means when I synchronize the symbol, then whatever I have selected for the one chart, it will be equally applied for all the charts. So if I change this, for example, from bank Nifty to let's say yes bank, right? So here now all these three will have yes bank. So for this one, let's say I go back and I change it to let's say reliance or let's say relax. So for that matter, so relaxo will be applied on all the three charts. So synchronize means all the three charts will display the same script. The other thing that we can synchronize or make same for all these three charts can be the interval. So when I click on the interval and I'm here, 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 doesn't really matter. The interval, let's say I make it to 10 minutes here, it will become 10 minutes for all of them. So the idea here is that we want to make sure that all of the, these three charts are in the same interval. Again, it depends on your requirement. So for one setting, you may not want to have the same symbol and same interval for all the three charts because it will not make a lot of sense. If I'm analyzing, let's say three stocks from the same sector, I probably what will do is I will uncheck the symbol so that I can have, let's say TCS here, Infosys here, HCL technologies here, but the interval can be the same so that I can analyze all three of them on the, let's say daily chart or weekly charts. The other option available is for crosshair. So when I click on crosshair, so you can see uh, if I make this cross, so wherever I'm pointing uh, this, this crosshair on one chart, I can see the respective price point on the other charts also. So that is how the crosshair gets synchronized. And the next one is about time. But I think what is more important is in terms of drawings. So if I, let's say, uh, synchronize the drawings here, and uh, let's say I, I'm plotting something, I'm plotting a trend line. So the line that I'm plotting on this one chart will start showing up on these charts also. 
So that is what it means to synchronize drawings that whatever drawings that I'm drawing here will show up everywhere. So for the time being, what I will do is I will uncheck these things and I will give you a practical example of how we will use this in our trading journey. So the way I use it is typically, let's say for example today, so let's say I was trading bank nifty, right? So what I will do is I will have bank nifty chart on the top and uh, at the bottom I will have the chart of nifty because I want to make sure that whatever trade that I'm taking, it is uh, in line with the overall market. So by having nifty here and by having bank nifty here, I can see both of them at the same time. How if I'm, let's say, taking a long trade, for example, today I took a long trade on Bank Nifty, right? So if I'm taking a long trade like this on Bank Nifty, I want to make sure that Nifty is also behaving in the way that I'm expecting it to. Because what I don't want is that if I've taken a long trade on Bank Nifty and Nifty starts to slide downwards, then my position can get in trouble. So this is a very useful functionality. And what you can also do is that, let's say, for example, uh, you have extended monitors, let's say, uh, let's say, you know, you have... Uh, you want to see something uh, on a different monitor. So what you can do is you can pop this window out and you can take this window and you can put it on a different monitor, right? So you can move this to a different monitor. On this monitor, you can keep an eye on Bank Nifty and Nifty. On the other monitor, which you cannot see in this particular video, I'm keeping an eye on Nifty Midcap. So you can do a lot of things with extended monitors also. So you can basically play around with this setting. You can play around with the layout and whichever is working for you, you can go for it. But at the end of the day, whatever you do, make sure that you are saving the layout. Right? So just uh, save layout and uh, give it a name. So in this case, I'm just going to give uh, my name here. So and once I have created the layout and any changes that I'm making here, I have to make sure that I click on this uh, cloud icon and just click on this and it will keep saving the layout. Now, there is one more thing here which I forgot to mention earlier. So you see this maximize window. So by clicking on this maximize chart, um, the I can see Bank Nifty much more clearly here. And when I want to go back to, let's say, the original configuration, I will click it back here and I'm back to the same screen. And I can do the same for Nifty as well. So when I can pay attention to Nifty and when I'm done, I will click on this and I'm back here. So what we'll do right now is I will go back to the original layout and uh, with one screen so that we can pay attention to the features that are there for charting. Okay, so next we have to focus on the chart setting. So there is a gear icon on the top. So I click on this chart properties and this window opens up. We have already seen the scales part, right? When we discussed about the auto scale and the log scale, we have discussed this. So let's talk about the style. Uh, and uh, what I will do is I will just move it here a little bit so that you can see that effect of these changes on the chart. So right on top, you have a setting called color bars based on previous close. So if you understand how candlesticks work, the color of the candle, right? So in this particular case, the color of the candle is determined by the open and the close. So if the closing price of this particular candle is below the opening price of that day, this candle will be red. And if the closing price of this particular bar, for example, here is higher than the opening price, it will be green. So that is how the traditional candlesticks are plotted. However, what you can also do is that you can decide the color of the bar based on the previous day's close. So pay attention to some of these small bars here. They are uh, red right now. When I click on this, it will turn into green, right? So here, some of these bars here, you can see them. They are changing color. So if I take example of this guy right here, the reason this is red is because it opened higher and it closed lower. But when I click on this, it becomes green because with respect to the previous day's close, it closed higher. So if you are using this kind of a logic, you have a way of uh, you know doing so by clicking on this bar. I personally like to stick with the traditional candlesticks, which will give me a little bit more insight into how the day panned out. Right for that reason, I keep it unchecked. Now moving on here, you can select the color of your candles. So right now the bullish candles are green and the bearish candles are red. So what I can also do is I can make any changes I want. So I can make uh, the green ones as yellow and I can make uh, the red ones as black. So this is another combination, right? And these are the borders. So if I don't want the borders, I will uncheck them. So you can see that there are borderless. But if I want the borders, let's say then the same color, I can have the same setting. So whatever you like in terms of your color, you can just play around with the candles and you can change them. The next is about the wick. So again, it goes back to the terminology of candles. So every candle has a body and a wick. So wick is the price which protrudes, uh, let's say, for example, here, this right here, this line, this red line, this is the wick. So some people, they don't like to see the wick. So for them, you can just do uncheck or check depending on whether you like it or not. And you can also change the color of the wick. So if it's uh, on the upper side, you can make it green for the up. You can make it basically make it red for 
the low so whatever you want to do with the wick you can just change your colors here um, the next one is the symbol uh, last value so here you can see 2104 so when I say uh, show line it shows me the line when I uncheck it the line is gone and I can change the uh, you know the, the thickness of the line by making it bigger and I can choose whether I want to see this label or not so if I uncheck that label the price label is gone but if I check it again uh, the price label comes back same is the kind of setting for the previous day's close on the intraday chart so you can just play around with this and the scales uh, we talked about this scale left or scale to the uh, right or no scale at all so this is up to your choice um, I personally don't like to mess around with any of these things I basically want to go with my defaults so I just want to like you know click on this and I go back to where I was earlier so with that said let's move on we talked about scales already let's talk about the background now with background uh, this is a basically the background color right so now we are using the trading view website they have something called as a dark theme and uh, dark theme basically changes everything into the dark color they don't have that option right here but you can build your own theme right so by clicking on this uh, black uh, background I have made everything black but you will have to kind of you know uh, you know play around with these grid lines and the horizontal lines and stuff like that so this is one way you can make things a little bit more conducive to your eyes so I do not use dark theme I stick with uh, the light theme and uh, symbol description for example right here so you can uncheck so reliance is gone uh, OHLC that is open high low and close values right now you can see OHLC here I can hide them if I want to so similarly you can basically just you know keep checking and unchecking and see what uh, you want to see and what you want to hide the idea behind this guys is that you know you make these settings one time and this is not something that you have to do on a daily basis you just to do this setting one time you save your layout and then you should be set last but not the least we already talked about the time zone you have to basically go and you have to pick Kolkata Right, that's our Indian time zone and that pretty much will take care of the chart settings now that we have covered all the important aspects on this side and this side let's talk about the charting tools uh, real quick so we'll start from the top here this is a cross so uh, this cross here you can have a cross like this right or you can uh, make it as a dot and uh, if you want to use it as an eraser you can use an eraser and if you want to just have nothing you can just go with arrow right so when I use an arrow then I don't see anything uh, like a cross here so this is like a, a blank so crosshairs if you want to use you can use this next comes the trend lines so here you have a lot of different trend lines and I use them often because uh, trend lines for example let's say here I want to draw something uh, from here to here so this is my trend line and you can see that now I also have a floating window which gives me an option to modify certain aspects of this trend line so for example the color so if I can uh, change the color to let's say I want to change it to blue I can change it to blue I can change uh, the thickness of the trend line I can make it a little thicker if I want to I can also change whether I want this line to be a straight line a thick line or it, I want it to be a dotted line right so that kind of a changes can be made here so do I want this line to have arrows uh, on one side I can also decide to have arrow on the other side right so whatever you want to do with this line whatever is your intention you can just do this and you can always like you know drag and drop this line and the one thing which I like is that for the span of this line it also highlights the dates here so that it's easy for us to see for how long uh, and for what price changes uh, was this uh, trend line applicable then you can just play around with just clicking on the settings and then I mean, you can do a lot of things here right so it's up to you how much savvy do you want to get I don't do a lot here I basically stick to the basics but uh, I do change the thickness once in a while to make things better but you also have some other options here for example you let's say you have multiple drawings you can decide which one will go to front which one will go backward so the order in which they appear you can decide which one will come first which one come, will come later and you can also clone it so let's say for example I cloned it and I can uh, move it like this so you can use the drawing that you have already made and you can you can apply that in a different setting right so and at the end of the day if you want to just delete it you can delete it also right so click on this and if you want to delete it just go for remove and it will be gone so I use a trend line uh, there is something called info line let's talk about this real quick so info line is basically a line which will also have some additional information so it will give you some more details about the distance the how many bars were covered um, and also the inclination right that's interesting right so 35 degrees from the bottom here so that's something if you are interested in you can use it if not then you just uh, delete it so you can play around with a lot of things here the one th other thing which I like is a trend angle so uh, reliance for example let's say I want to see that uh, reliance uh, how was this move in the past uh, few days 
so i can see that this move uh, made a 53 degree angle from the horizontal so it means that the move has been a little bit more aggressive right so if i consider let's say 30 or 35 degree as a normal then with respect to that it clearly shows that reliance moved a little bit faster than that so this trend angle can give you that kind of a sense and similarly you can do vertical lines you can do cross lines you can do arrows rays and stuff parallel channels is again i think it's interesting because you can draw parallel uh, channels uh, let's say here and here uh, right so you can just kind of you know move it around uh, here for example you can drag it so you can do all sorts of stuff and always you know there's a toolbar which is out here so just click on that so let's say you want to change the the color of the channel you can do that and you can also change uh, you know how much lighter do you want it to be so again it fits your comfort level you do what you feel like is the right uh, color and combination for you next set of toolbars they are all these fancy toolbars i don't personally use them i mean i use them once in a while if there is one specific thing that i'm uh, looking at so for example fibonacci retracement i will probably use once in a while but i am not a very big fan of these fancy tools because in my opinion they just complicate the analysis more than they have to be right again but that's my opinion if you guys want to use it and if you are using it already then of course go for it then we come to the uh, you know some of uh, the other uh, tools available here so brush for example is just like a freehand tool right so i can draw something i can i can make some symbols i can say this is right this is wrong so whatever you want to do it's like a free text so by the way there is a there is a button at the bottom which says uh, which is for removing uh, drawing tools when you click on this all those drawings will be gone right so so you can play around with the brush you can have rectangles so if a if a stock is making let's say some sort of a consolidation pattern you can make a rectangle kind of a, a picture here you can change the colors if you want to right so whatever is it color whatever is your texture preference you can go for it increase the size up and down make the rectangle you can actually drag and drop it if you want to right so there are different ways you can play around with the rectangle it's a, it's a nice uh, functionality i like it and similarly you can do triangles you can do curves i mean so it's up to you how fancy do you want to get now, now after that let's talk about the text so you have a lot of different ways you can uh, create text so you can have just like a plain old text uh, right so you can just have text like that or you can have something called as an anchored text so in this case let's say this is an anchored text so an anchored text what will happen is so this is a regular text this is the anchor text right so let's see what happens when i scroll this so anchor text is staying at one place whereas a text the one that we created is moving right so anchored is anchored to one place on the chart it's not going to move from there text on the other hand will keep moving along with our scrolling so again i'm going to delete all of them same is the case with note and anchored note so you can have a note like this uh, call it as a note and you can basically it's like you know you can move around this note here and when you hover on it it will tell you what the note was and similarly you can have an anchored note so you can just play around with this guys again it's call out balloon and stuff like that where you can just uh, you know pick anything in this particular case it's just telling me the price so if you're let's say demonstrating something to somebody else you can use these kind of features to explain better after this again we have another set of fancy uh, drawings uh, i don't use them much uh, if i have to plot head and shoulder for example i would rather just plot it myself rather than you know having a system do it for me or uh, using these kind of tools but if you are savvy you can go for it next ones are the symbols there are a lot of them here i don't use many of them i mean i sometimes i use the arrows like uh, an up arrow if there is a buy signal and a down arrow there is a uh, there is a sell signal so for example here i can create let's say there is a sell signal here i can do something like this i can change the color to red and i can probably have a text somewhere around saying the sell signal but apart from that i don't use them much but they have given plenty of these uh, you know icons and you can just use them wherever you feel like it the next one here is for measurement right so when i click on this for example i want to measure uh, let's say this area so this is very nice because what it tells me from here to here on both the dimensions it is telling me in terms of price that from this point to this point uh, let's say reliance went up 14.75% uh, and 298 rupees in terms of absolute value and in terms of uh, the horizontal time it's telling me it was 57 bars right so 57 bars which means 83 days in terms of the calendar days so moving down here we have zoom in and zoom out functionality right so zoom in and zoom out so when i zoom in i can also go back to zoom out so that's uh, something if you want to do it you can do it uh, this is an interesting functionality called magnet mode so when magnet mode is on whatever lines that we are drawing or trend lines we are drawing it will snap to the closest price right so in this case let's say i want to draw a support 
on reliance so if I'm, I'm drawing a horizontal line here and it's going to snap it to the nearest price point so it's a useful bit of a tool if you want to use it so magnet uh, mode should be enabled if you and you can see it says here that magnet mode snaps drawing place near price to the closest OHLC value and you, and you have a couple of other uh, nice handy features here so let's say you want to stay in the drawing mode you can stay in the drawing mode and you can also lock all the drawing tools so that uh, whatever changes that you have made they do not get disrupted they do not get deleted by mistake so this is pretty much it guys right i mean whatever we have discussed so far pretty much covers most of what there is uh, there in trading view and if a little bit here and there is left i'm sure you can figure out on your own okay guys so i hope that the charting functionalities that you have seen in this video it made sense they are easy they are intuitive and it is basically a matter of playing around with those settings right so just play around just spend some time with those settings and you will automatically get it so all the easiest stuff will be done by this video right from here onwards you will get down to some serious business and that will be alerting backtesting and strategy and i want you guys to be ready when we will get there because that is where you will see the real benefit of using trading view right so just be ready for that and give us feedback give us comment give us support give us appreciation whatever you can to make us feel better about what we are doing and giving us encouragement and we will see you guys next time with the alerting functionality of trading view